So that becomes an emotional discipline, which is what I was covering today. Now, you were a drill instructor, correct? Yes. I Tell us a little bit about what that was like. I think where to start. Basically, you're you're you go through drill instructor school. You don't learn how to be a drill instructor in drill instructor school. You, it's something you learn your first cycle with uh, the kids. So if you can imagine standing, you have about 90 kids, and by kids you have 18 year olds who just left mommy and daddy. You have your inner city thugs, 240 pounds, former football players, former gang members. You have guys with college degrees, guys who couldn't make it in real estate, and so you have all of these different diverse types of people, and you're expected to break them down on a certain level and then bring them up at the same time. So especially as a new drill instructor, you have to learn how to carry yourself because you're that ultimate example. And by ultimate example, in everything, you had to shoot better than them, you had to run faster than them, your uniform was always impeccable, at two o'clock in the morning, when you're running out of the duty hut, everything is perfectly tucked away, no, no nothing. Did you make your bed? Yes, that, that duty hut. And in fact, we, one thing, what I used to always do to mess with the room. I'm not kidding when I talk about making the bed. Making the bed is a discipline. You we we used to always have the, the window to the duty hut open. You used to leave it open 24 seven, and it would just be perfect the whole time. And then people ask, well, where did drill instructors sleep? Don't worry about it. Drill instructors never slept because we were always on the clock. It's basically three months of constant being on. And so any and everything, you go on a hike, drill instructor was the first one up the hill or the one pushing the rest of the kids up the hill. And so that trains you a lot. What is, it, what is he sharing with you? What is it? What, what do you feel my whole point is in heaven? This is a real, this is a gift for me to have him here. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's going to be the best of the best, among others that are trying to be the best of the best. Would you be a guest on my Tuesday night columns? Yes, I will. Good. Because, because so this is his content. Is how do you do yes, that? Because the, the discipline, a professional athlete in today's world has a similar discipline. Yes. Because there's always someone that's going to take your job. There's always someone better than you. And if the lifespan of your career is only four years, you got a very short window to get the maximum out of your potential. Because there's always someone better. So we always tell the kids that that guy is always doing an extra push up, that extra pull up, <coughs> just a little bit tighter than you. So, and he's your enemy. And it's either you or him. So you take that mentality in everything you do, and you'll always, you'll always outwork. The what happens with eight Marines? Because they operate in eight Marines. What is that about? Teamwork. We're always. It's always about the team, and we always take care of each other, and we're always looking out for each other, because if you don't have that perfect team, you won't succeed. Or you die. You just have to. You know the history of the Marine Corps? A little bit about it? Because it, it, it was the second tier branch of the military. It was. It was the, Marines used, the Marines started out with eight Marines, or the, the eight Marines. So eight sure. Marines were so on sure. a ship. They, the Marines started out as a small division of the Navy. Yes, That's right. So they still are officially a department. And until World War II, the Marines were a second-tier branch of the service. They always got the the Marines have always consistently got the worst equipment. Yes, handed down to the brother. That's still true today, as a matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> the Navy gets their budget, and then we get a portion of that budget, and so we make do with what we have. So there's no Marine Academy, change. right? There's no Marine Academy. There's a Naval Academy, there's an Air Force Academy, there's an Army Academy, but there's no Marine Academy. It's the only branch of the service that does not have a specialized place that their officers come out of. That's correct. So the officers come from the ranks. <laughs> Basically, boot camp is where, where they come from. So and Marine they becomes a lieutenant camp. colonel or a general came from the end run. They actually work their way up. Yes. It's the only branch of the service that there's no ROTC. No. They start as a private. That's great. <laughs> Actually, recruit, but to be more politically correct nowadays, privates. But basically, in the Army, as soon as you get there, you're considered a soldier, and they train that a soldier does this, whereas a Marine, you have to earn that title. And once you earn it, no one can ever take it. Now, why do Marines march? 
What does what marching serve to do? That's discipline. That teaches instant willingness, obedience to orders. Every single thing is designed to teach a, a, a person that discipline. Marching, shooting, everything. Running, everything is to teach discipline. So basically, in a combat situation, you want that discipline. If you go and tell a kid, hey, you're going to go that way, but there are people shooting, don't get you, basically. You get what I'm saying, right? You go in. Yes, exactly. And if they're not going to go unless they know that you would be first going to go, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell somebody, basically, what they call it, you can't push spaghetti noodles. Or, you have to basically pull, basically lead from the front, same concept. Yeah. Yeah. So. What, do you, what do you even have I do the internet marketing for Kukin and Clark. Uh, right now, I'm going to school full time, uh, using a GI Bill to basically educate myself, open myself up to other opportunities. And so I met uh, Daryl and uh, Amy Mom, and they've kept me on so far. So, <coughs> yeah. Uh, one, of my employee, one of my employees was a four-year Marine marksman. He did four years of the non-active duty, and he was he hit. 249 out of 250 at one of the meter marks, which is pretty good, isn't it? Yes. It takes what kind of discipline to do the extreme discipline. But at the end of the day, with discipline repeated, oh, I'm sweating. It's, it's a mm -hmm. right, hot seat. It's yeah. <laughs> a love seat. It's a love seat. Yeah, I'm learning that. But in which way, the uh, really in a hot seat. Uh, that's why I don't matter. I'm always sweating my shirt. But basically, this plan is simply following. Take pictures of structures. Yes. Post this on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We should be posting this right now. Those of you who use yeah. Facebook, mm -hmm. you'd say Jeffrey Combs, and then you'd edify Imran and Daryl and Sandy O and say the Investors Club. Learning discipline from Rob Fraser. Rob Fraser, 12 year Marine veteran drill instructor. Right? This is how you do it. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. All right. So, and you use this to, to promote yourself, right? That's yes, correct. And you do internet marketing. This is I do internet. I get about two, almost 300 YouTube videos now. Stay right there. Keep talking. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I do uh, video marketing, and then I also do internet marketing for uh, Daryl and Kevin mm -hmm. So, uh, since he's having me up here, he's mm -hmm. really appreciate it. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for We're not done. Okay. I can take it. You can wipe yourself up. Yeah, it's nothing new. It's just what are you learning from listening to it? I, you know, I, it takes a it takes a great person to be a marine, and it also takes a great person to to excel and be that one twentieth of that one percent. So I was sharing with Rob back there. And this was an opportunity. I told him that when I leave a hotel room, I clean the hotel room up the way I clean my house up. I wipe down every counter. I make I make my bed the way I make my bed at home. I take the trash out in the trash can. I have I put either a plastic bag or a brown bag in the trash can, and I take the trash out. I tip the maid. I tip the maid very well. I want exceptional service, and so to get it, I'm willing to pay for it. And, the, and once you understand this, if you're going to really own a business, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, right? That's right. Absolutely. Discipline. Discipline it starts with the basics. It, right. It starts with the fundamentals. Exactly. Anything can be learned. It's exactly. It's, it's the same thing with the, the, the Marines. It's you can learn how to become one, and it's just the simple, basic things you do on a daily basis that adds up over time. Right. So you can bring the worst kid in off the streets, yeah. and if that kid is willing to let go, yeah. you become the best soldier. Well, and, and just to kind of parallel, um, you said something interesting. You, you don't just go in and you learn it. You said you actually take them and you break them down first. So you, they, you undo a lot of bad habits. That's correct. Before you build them up. Right, so there's, it's not just adding. It's a 90 day process. Yeah, there's so right. a reason yeah. that it's a 90 day process, right? Yes. yes. And so taking them in, breaking them down is a unique situation, but that also means you have to carry yourself. Everything you would tell a recruit to do, you would have to do better. How many of you have seen the movie Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. So you well, met who? Arlie Army. <coughs> the actual gunner sergeant who starred in that, in that movie. You remember that when he was private pile? What is a jelly donut doing in your foot locker? And he was the private was hungry, sir. Remember that? Remember that oh scene? yeah, very well. Very well. I mean, that's a, that's like etched in movie history, right? You know, just I didn't know that pile shit that high. Right. 
Okay. So discipline is a way of life. For a small percent of the population. Correct. Being undisciplined is a way of life for most of the population. Right. This is also, when you own a business, you must understand that most of the people you encounter will have no discipline. Exactly. And so you, you, you have to be able to understand, this is why the personality types are very important, so that you understand who will and who won't. Just like in your platoon, you had to be able to read who you can count on. Exactly. And basically it's finding out what each of their strengths were yeah. and then using that. For example, the big inner city gang member, 240 pounds, he would be the guide. And the people who are good at leaders, small unit leadership would be the squad leaders. The guys who, with the intellect, would be my scribes and my you know, admin and what all we call them, but basically the scribes and the guys who wrote everything down, kept track of everything. The guys who were very well organized, whiskey locker recruits. That was basically where we kept all of our supplies, shaving cream, everything that for all the kids uh, in the lockers. So we had sort of teaching you how to recruit. You understand this? He's giving you tips on if you're going to have a leverage business or a mastermind. Or, right. You got to find you apply you, you apply to people's strengths. I, you know, I mean, I like the, uh, the whole example of leadership, too. It's not just about telling them what to do when you're young, it's you gotta lead by example. Exactly. Don't ever ask someone to do what you're not willing to do. Right. That's right. And that, I would just say that's a real interesting process when you have all those kids and they're looking at you and they're watching you the whole time, literally 24 7. So you can't have a moment to where you slip or to where you even yawn. It was that intense. Your shape always had to be perfect. Your, all your uniform lines had to be tucked away perfect every single time. There was no exception. What does that mean? Tell them what that means. Uniform lines and tucked. Wow. <laughs> but basically, your, your gig line, if, if you can imagine a shirt, I'm on the buttons here. <laughs> basically, your buckle, your, your, your shirt line, your ribbons, your cover, your trousers, everything just spit and polished 24 7. And so that includes. 4.45, when you leave the duty at 8 a.m. and you're waking them up, and all the way up until 10.15 when they're going to sleep. So then after lights, you can, you know, we sort of dress down a little bit with PT here, but that was the extent of it. Uh, so. What did that do for your life? <laughs> Revolutionary change, uh, <laughs> revolutionary change, I'll, I'll just say it's best of times and worst of times, but on a professional level, we're talking that basically discipline is it. If you master those small skills, master those skills, and just simply do the same thing day in and day out, same thing that you alluded to earlier about it may be being boring to eat the same things over and over and over again, but that's simply what it takes. It's not going to be something magical. It's just going to instantly happen. So, Rob, I have employees, and I already know they're not going to treat my business the way I do. Exactly. Because it's human nature. They're employees because they're employees. Yes. They aspire to own a business, but I'm always picking up after what they don't do. Like what you shared with me about my, I didn't know that, but I guarantee you I'm going to monitor that. Because that's not me. I don't operate like that. But I constantly pick up after my employees. When they're gone, I straighten up their desk. When they're gone, I pick up what they don't. When they're gone, I pick up what they didn't do. Unfortunately, I have three kids that work for me, 19, 23, and 27, and they are awesome. But they're, they're young men. They're going to make mistakes. And the more you understand that, the less pressure you put on yourself and them. Because when someone's working for you, they don't typically take ownership of what you own. Right. Remember when you were an employee? Remember when you were watching the clock? Remember when you were giving a half-assed effort? You wanted your check on Friday? Well, that's what they're thinking, isn't it? Well, you want somebody coachable and trainable, and somebody you can mold into the perfect person or perfect replacement of yourself. Do you guys get a picture of Rob? Yes. yes. You definitely want to get a picture of him and, and put that on Facebook, and then tags him, right? F-R-A-S-E-R? Yes. Like you raise her with an F. I know you told me that last night when I was looking for the other I just couldn't I one Fantastic. So how do you write that, Crystal? How do I write? How do you write what you just saw here? For myself, you're asking, Jeff? Um, the discipline. It's no, how do you write on Facebook? Oh, on Facebook. I'm going to edify Rob that he, wow. it was, he's been a Marine for 12 years. Here, I'll do it for you. Thank you. Had the privilege, Fraser. Had the privilege 
sharing part of the afternoon with 12-year Marine Corps drill instructor Rob Frazier with Jeffrey Combs. Rob absolutely broke it down. Yeah. Thank you. And you would say that, and then you edit, you share it with him, because you want, and then you'll get a lot of likes from him. People want to know. People want to know what you learned from him. Yes. What did you learn from him about this last 20 minutes? You can put it into practical application in your life. Here's the, here's the real question. The way you do life is the way you do business. And the way you do business is the way you do life. Yes. When you start to understand this, if you're undisciplined in life, you'll be undisciplined in business. You'll be able to separate the fact from the fiction. But once you become disciplined, whatever discipline means to you, right? Because it's like beauty, it's in the eye of the beholder. He doesn't wear his shirts pressed the way he used to, he's loosened up a little bit. That was that you had to adapt to the situation. Right? Exactly. Right? Give him a hand. Was that good? It was awesome. It was great. Thank you. Was that good, Denise? That was a little hidden gem. Now, how did that come about? How did that come about? Speaking. Got work. Sharing. Actually, I asked him a question. And Daryl had asked me to cover questions. I interviewed him back at the back table. He, he thanked me for what he received the other night, and he wanted to tell me a little bit about himself. So in listening to him, I knew that he had value that he could add to you as an added value to the value you're already receiving, because you never know who's in your audience. The great Jim Rohn told me once upon a time that he did an event on Century Boulevard in Los Angeles, right where Century ends at LAX. You know where that is? Yeah. And right there, at the end, there's a hotel right on the right where Lassie had to get meet. You know where that is, right? And there were 60 people in his audience in 1980. And of those 60 people, one was 19 and one was 17. The 19 year old was a guy named Mark Hughes, who went on to found a billion dollar company called Herbalife. And the 17 year old was a man named Tony Robbins. Robbins went on to work for Jim Rohn for four years selling Jim Rohn seminars. He learned some of his, his, some of his key skills telemarketing Jim Rohn seminars. So you just never know who's in your audience, right? Yes, sir. So what did you learn from him, anyone? Take your, uh, your, what you're trying to do, break it down to small <laughs> tasks, and then be good at all of them, and then the whole picture will be good. I'm going to cover that also. Style. What else did you learn from them? The people can change. They can. Yeah. Provided they're willing. And they volunteer to join Marines for four years, don't they? That's correct. They do. What well, else did you learn? Overcoming fear. Anyone else? Make habits. Teamwork. I know for um, my own personal experience with the gym instructor, they run on an hour, four hours of sleep each night, and they're running back and forth screaming at these kids. And they have to have that discipline to be something that's in their being. It's not a mental thing anymore. You said the key word, innate, which means also to integrate. We're creating a one with. That's what any of these one with. The N8 or one with. Anyone else can share? Being disciplined is a sometimes thing, it's an all of them. All right, so let's, here's what I want to To the next level of this is communication style. This is something that I teach is your communication style. The way you communicate with yourself, the way you communicate with others is very important to the results that you seek. Now, if you're going to sell, or if you're going to, or you're in a profession that requires sales and or marketing, the way you speak and the way you write is very important. That's why I ask you to start to watch billboards, watch commercials, watch the purpose. Now one of the worst products, one of the worst food products I have ever seen that blisters your mouth when you eat it, and people continue to buy it, is a product called Hot Pockets. <laughs> but people buy it. Pardon? Yeah, when, do you when, when have we typically eaten a Hot Pocket? 
Those of us who have drank before. <laughs> Not even I'm over. Then. I'm over. Okay, so you eat a hot pocket when? When, and you're standing where typically? In the kitchen. Or where? where? Typically in a 7 Eleven, isn't it? Oh, is it right? Right? Yeah. Isn't that a little hot pocket? Now, why would we buy a food product that is that bad that blisters our mouth? Because it's easy. Because we've been, it's been advertised to us. And the slogan, how does the slogan for hot pockets go? Hot uh, pockets. pockets. It's very interesting. The same people who wrote the Hot Pockets slogan also wrote this one. You may remember it. By minute. So inflection comes down at the end of the sentence. By minute. Next time you buy minute, which I have a minute flown in my bag, it says BY minute, not BUI. BY minute. But what is by minute mean? By minute. So what does that mean? Purchase. Right. Subliminal. Subliminal, right. So the way you communicate is very important to the results that you create. The way you communicate with yourself is very important to the results you create. Now you heard Carolyn communicate with you about a house she's going to let go of, right? Yes. But the communication style she had for a while was what? Not very clear. Then you have a roommate, right? who you have taken in and you've really assisted to empower her and she's been through a lot of challenges in her life. She's been a very good roommate. So you've been communicating to yourself for a while. I don't know what's going to happen to her, right? Right, guilt. Yeah, you had guilt about, oh my God, if I sell my house, it's going to happen to my roommate, which is, I mean, that's honorable, isn't it? Yes. But if you continue to use that to be a reason not to move forward, then what happens? Years pass. The biggest problem with procrastination is the years pass. You start a business in 2007 and you're still going nowhere. Again. Years pass. That's the difference between an intention, which is not a word I ever use in my vocabulary. Even though Wayne Dyer popularized it, I know that Wayne had a good meaning. Have you ever seen his book, The Law of Intention? So a lot of people use this word. What's your intention? What's your intention? I don't intend to do anything. I commit and decide. So you commit and decide and you have to learn to do this. Commit first, produce later. See, many people, they'll think about producing, then they'll commit. Well, I'll hire you when I have the money. It's a very, very common term that I, that I encounter frequently. Well, I'm, my intention is to, after six months, I'm going to hire you in six months. Now, I know, I know I've been through this long enough to know that anyone who wants to hire me, whether it's $200, $2,000, $20,000, $200,000, the right person always finds it. The same, same in real estate. The right person always finds a way to get the money, right? Yes. Do you understand this? This is numismatic law. The right people always get it. But if your communication style with money is about poverty consciousness and it comes from growth thoughts, you'll continue to attract people to your reality to perpetuate the feelings that you live in. This is one of the number one causes that people encounter in sales and they don't break through is this right here. Their money talk, which is a communication style, isn't conducive to attracting the people. You hear me? You hear me in the back row there? Do you hear me loud and clear there? You understand this? So when you're building a network of people and you encounter people who can't pony up for 600 bucks, it's called SYC. You got it? SIA Chief. When people give you money excuses, you have to learn to ask questions around the reason that they, that they are saying this. When they give you time excuses, or whatever it is, you have to learn to ask the questions so you can find out what is meant versus what is said. There's a big difference between what is meant versus, let me get back to you. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. What does that typically mean, generally speaking? <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm blowing off. Pardon? I'm blowing off. Well, right. I mean, what's it really mean? I'm not a, no, yeah, thank you. Well, it's, it's somewhere in there. It's usually I'm not interested. I can't make a decision. Usually it's done by a people pleaser. A people pleaser will do it. They'll use a sound, not a word, yeah. Y-E-H. They, they, they seldom ever use yes. It's yeah. Let me get back to you. Now pay attention to how they use yeah, not yes. Also pay attention to this. How many people use this term? This is a very interesting term in communication style. And notice I've been asking people all morning, is that yes? 
Why am I doing that? Because yes is a decision. Right. Now I'm assisting you to understand that yeah, yep, uh-huh, okay, is not going to be recognized by your unconscious because your unconscious didn't separate fact and fiction. Once again, buy some of Asaraf's content. Asaraf is one of the best neuroscientists. Buy some content from a gentleman named David Hawkins, Power Versus Force. You got it? Power Versus Force, a great book to get. Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. Start to understand a little more about neuroscience, conscious and unconscious. In the 1962 classic, what was that? Power of Your Subconscious Mind by, every one of you should have this book, Joseph Murphy. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Then there was a great minister of Palm Strings in the 50s and 60s that wrote groundbreaking content as a woman writer, Catherine Ponder. And have you ever read her? She was a unity minister and she wrote the book, Open Your Heart to Receive. She wrote the, a book that every one of you should have, The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity. The more you start to change the way you communicate, right? What happens? You start to communicate differently, what starts to happen? Attracting different results. Well, right. Not only that, but your unconscious begins to change. Your brain wave begins to change. So once again, if you go back, if you are conditioned to live in a household where there's violence, addictions, codependence, and aggressive behavior, passive aggressive behavior, your brain waves going to be in the same state because your body got sensitized to it. When you, when, you, when you decide to change, see this is why, this is why you can be recovering from, a, from an addiction, but if you're still financially challenged, it's going to be a direct reflection of your low self-esteem. Confidence and self-esteem are not in the same situation. Confidence and competence, you can become competent at a profession, competent at a niche, but if you don't have self-esteem, your unconscious will find ways to sabotage it. Then you'll be left starting all over again. Get it? So this right here is the foundation. So this is the cornerstone of a building. Now, the Freemasons, you know what that is? You know what the term Freemason means, don't you? What does it mean? Like stone cutter. Oh, stone cutter. Stone cutter is a trade. Right, so it's a trade, right? Yeah, and it's become a union, right? Not all this trade in the world. Exactly. And what is their, what is their tool? Their tool is a... Uh, Crown? Crown. Oh, it's crown. Right, right. I'm sorry. So, and, right, so now when they would build a home or they would build the pyramid or whatever they would build, here would be the cornerstone. This is the foundation. So they would build this cornerstone so where the sun comes up. As the sun raises, this is the cornerstone of the house so they can see the light. Hence the term enlightened ones. That's the mean, that's where the term comes from, enlightened ones. So in energy, like if you're transmuting your energy, and I covered this the other night, from anxiety, that's the lowest transmutation of energy, then the highest transmutation of energy would be God, infinite intelligence, deity, and source. You've heard the term connected, plugged in, all these terms. That's at about 1,000 decibels a second. That means that there is no separation between you or source, and you are in a no K-N-O-W state. That's where you know that you know that you know, and there's no room for doubt in that state. You can really start to change your game when you move up to awareness. That means now you have a different level of knowing. Awareness is right above doubt. It doesn't take a whole lot to move above doubt, because doubt, you're in fear and faith, so you're already, you got one foot in faith already. The other foot is just the next step forward. That's, when you, that's the let go process. Then there's love, joy, bliss, and then that's where enlightenment comes along. Now, this is really the law of attraction right here. This is how you explain the law of attraction right here. When you live here, you'll attract more frequently. But you also have to factor that 80% of society is, is transmuting their energy at 207 cycles a second. That's freaky. That means that the average person is between fear and doubt. That's the average person we encounter. So this is why you've got to be, you have to be a very good talent scout. Would you agree? Yes. So, and right, you, you learn to sort. Not only do you, you scout properties, you scout people, you become aware and in tune. Now you said a really you said a really good term, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. 
The uh -huh, yes. yes. What was that term I you said? No, it, well, I said that one. You said in eight. Oh, in eight. eight. What does in eight mean? Like, um, I'm not entirely sure. I am. <laughs> it becomes part of who you are internally, not necessarily through your thought process. Well, let's look at, you ever heard of this term, the hundredth monkey theory? You ever heard of this? Yeah, you know what it is? I don't know what it is. Okay, well, in the Aleutian Islands, a monk, the first monkey that washed the fruit, there's a book, The Hundred Monkey Theory. It's written in the 50s. It's another book you should have. Very, very little book. So the first monkey that starts to wash the fruit, he does it innately. Then monkeys around the rest of the islands, without communicating with him, begin to wash the fruit also. Now why would this be? Monkey see, monkey do. Right. So what else? What else does that mean? They learn leaders and followers. Well, it's innate, isn't it? They're not communicating this. It's innate. It triggers something. So, right, so what uh, he was teaching, um, pardon? Is it biological? No, it's neuro neurological. So that, that means it's telepathic. Mm -hmm. mm. So telepathic. Now, there are certain people in, who can telepathically communicate. I can communicate with one of my employees that I were talking to. I can communicate with him right now. Like right this minute, I can send him a signal and I get a response back from him. Another one I'm getting a lot closer to with that because we are innate and I attracted them. Not only that, I wrote the advertisement that attracted them. And I handpicked another one, and another one walked up to me and volunteered to be part of what I was doing for free. To start with, because he wanted to spend time with me. So those are my three employees that are 19, 23, and 28. I'm innately skilled at attracting good people, say that. <laughs> now say this one. I'm innately skilled at attracting people I can collaborate with to create prosperity. Now what does that start to mean in your communication style? You're transmuting the energy that's in alignment with what you want. But when you have anxiety about attracting people and situations that will fail, what happens? You attract those situations. Well, either you attract the situation to fulfill your feelings or you procrastinate not to fail. Right. Right. You got it? Or yes. because of the addiction, you're attracted to people that are going to disappoint you because you're attracted to the, that whole cycle of disappointment. So, once again, your communication style. In your communication style, I, S T Y L E, am clear. My words. What does that mean? Jeff, that means you clearly articulate what it is that. Me or you? I do. I clearly articulate what I would like to receive. Right, so that means I'm clear of what I. Ask more. Right. Now, you unequivocally had the best table in the restaurant last night. Absolutely. Now, did you request that beforehand? Yes, I did. All right, so we ate at a restaurant called Manhattan. And there was, I noticed that table right immediately because it was, it was a rounded booth. Right? Yes. And it was absolutely the captain's table, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And our waiter was different than the rest of the, of the restaurant. Did you notice that? Yes. We had the maitre d'. Yes, we did. He was our waiter. And he was from? Paris. He, no, he was from Italy, but oh. he worked in Paris. Paris. I had a conversation with him while you were in the bathroom. I found out everything about him. <laughs> so did you specifically ask for that? Yes, I did. And you also picked up the tab? Yes, I did. And did you arrange that beforehand? Yes, I did. See, now this is what? This is very clear, isn't it? She yes. was very clear what was going to happen. Now, what would happen if you started to do that? I would hope that we get the same result. You would hope? You, you know you're going to get the result. I, I would get the same result if same. I asked for the same thing. Right. How many of you are smart ass? Yeah. Sometimes. Well, I suggest you eliminate some of it because it alienates good people. The people who are much more evolved from you pick up on it immediately. And we tend, I'm a recovering smart ass, by the way, and we tend to walk away quickly like that. 
because you tend to put us in a position that we have to defend ourselves, and I'm not, it's a very exhausting situation. So it's, my father is a smart ass, and I became one also. He used to have nicknames for everyone and things like that. I learned to let go of that. Mm -hmm. That this alienates very, the very people that you seek to attract, that you think you're being witty and funny with, they, they, they can read through that, they can read through your high self-confidence and low self-esteem in seconds. Would you call sarcasm like a form of anger? Or, or, or smart-assism, <laughs> if that's a word? Sarcasm is passive aggressive. Passive. Very. So you have to decide what it is you require in your life. What is it that you want in your life? Who are the people that you want in your life? There's the 20%. So when broken down, watch how 20% breaks down. This is going to go back to 80-20. In the 20%, 20% of 20 is 4. So you're looking for 4 percenters in the 20%, aren't you? Isn't that right, no, right? So in the hierarchy of military, in the Marines, this would be the officers, wouldn't it? But then the 20% of 4 breaks down to 0.083. That would be the lieutenant colonels in situations like that, people who climb the rank. Then 20% of 0.083 would be 1 20th of 1%. That's how many millionaires there are in America, 1 20th of 1%. Wow, wow, this is good, isn't that how it breaks down? This is exactly how it breaks down. This is the hierarchy of all organizations, 1 20th of 1%. This is called the law of the Law of the few. So in the law of averages, this is the 80%. Occasionally, an 80%er can become a 20%er. Occasionally. Sometimes a 20%er reverts back to the 80%. But you constantly are looking for this. Chad Wade was a perfect example. He was a, he was this, but he had so much conflict with his divorce, he died in a plane wreck, but the plane wreck never killed him. The divorce killed him. He never got over the divorce. He ended up in jail three different times because he couldn't let go of the divorce. And I watched him. I was coaching this guy, and he died in a plane wreck, but the plane wreck never killed him. The divorce broke him. He lost everything he had. Do you remember this? Lost every property, lost all of his money, lost everything he had. He ended up owing over $350,000 in back child support. Because he couldn't let go of control. So this just shows you that even being here doesn't mean you get to stay here, right? And if, and if, if success is your identity and you lose your success, then you have no identity. Right. So your identity better be this. I am me. I am free. Make sense? That, that's your identity. Your profession isn't your identity. Your profession is what you do for a living. What you do while you're living is what? Who I am. Have you ever heard anyone say, I don't even know who I am? That would be about 80% of the population, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? More. Or higher, right? Yeah. What are you receiving here in this little stanza? Carolyn, what are you receiving here? That's what I'm receiving. That was good. Is, <laughs> um, is that I want to be part of the 20% and working. So what what So what's the transformation required? The daily action. Ah, very good. The DD, daily discipline. Success is about this. Do you have a question for me, Miguel? Uh, I, I wanted to get more information about that. Um, 100 monkey? No, the the vibration. Okay, the go to, get the book Power Versus Force okay. by David Hawkins. Okay. Hawkins has four books that he's written. Uh, letting Go. Letting Go. He's one of the few authors that ever wrote a book on Letting Go. David Hawkins, Power Versus Force. Okay, thank you. He wrote another book called I, like the letter I, and then I, I, of I. I, of I. The letter I, of I. You can come on in. Just walk on in. Hi. Come on in. Just How are you doing, Monica? Great. What are you receiving from me today? Just grab a seat. Okay. Yeah. Discipline. Discipline. What does that mean? Discipline. That I need to hold myself accountable. You need to or I am? I am going to hold myself accountable to 
Now, Monica didn't do anything wrong with her communication style, what did she say? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Not You didn't know you said it, did you? Yeah, you, like, you say it and then you have to check back. Now, when you check back, what begins to happen? Okay. You begin to form. When you when you can correct your words in mid normal what begins to happen? You're aware. <coughs> yeah, you become aware. What are you receiving from here today, Denise? And I'm honored that you and Simon and Carolyn would come here today. Thank you, Jeffrey. I have a big database in San Diego. Notice that you were you and Crystal came to this event today. The rest of the people came with Imran and Daryl, and you came out of my database. You could be doing something else today. Yes, definitely. What are you receiving today, Denise? Uh, what I'm receiving is more clarity of who I am and who I'm becoming. Now, you, you seek to become successful, right? Correct. In a network marketing company. Correct. Called ICE uh, Genius. Correct. That is your company of choice right now, right? Yes, it is. And what has been the biggest challenge that you've encountered in the last 12 months as a businesswoman? Uh, Jeffrey, the biggest challenge was good. that I'm overcoming is taking my business to the next step as I evolve as a stronger leader. What does that actually mean? To the next step. To overcome my personal challenges, to identify the cause and effect of my behavior today. And what are those personal checks? So you want to keep asking questions? Yeah. So that we can do what? Get to the root cause. Get to the cause, right? If I don't know why I do what I do, I will continue to do that which is familiar. You know the word familiar comes from, don't you? From that family. family. It means how I've been conditioned to behave. I continue to do the same thing neurologically to create a biochemical feedback that I've become addicted to, which is disappointment. Disappointment is an interesting word in words. This means not, means not appointed is what it means, not appointed. You ever heard someone say, unbelievable? Yeah. Well, that's, you're re-edifying what's not believable because un means not. Your unconscious is not separate fact and fiction. So Denise, you're looking for a QL, you a quantum leap? Yes. Where the sum is greater than whole of parts, is that right? That's correct. So there's a book called Quantum Leap written by a great author named James Mapes. It really breaks down what happens in a quantum leap. It's where 2 plus 2 equals 4, right? That's, that's standard, right? But you want to be able to 2 plus 2 equals 16 because that's 2 squared, right? So that's a quantum leap where the sum is greater than all of the parts. Now, Denise, I've had it happen to me. I had one year where I was $99,000 in credit card debt. And the very next year, I created $462,000. I watch it happen to my clients. I have a woman named Alexis Romano, who I started coaching her in 2011. She hired me in June 28, 2011. When she hired me, she was achieving between $500 and $800 a month when she hired me. Now I got to witness her quantum leap. So that was 2011. In 2012, I watched her create 26000 now that was a significant year for her because something very significant happened to her. Her house burned down. She lost every possession she owned. And she lost, and that also put her in a position where she took a leave of absence. So it was fun, it was interesting. The universe put her in a position. I kept telling her to quit her job, quit her job, quit her job. When her house burned down, she took a leave of absence, so she quit her job. I watched her income go from 2011 that went from it went from 16,000 to 26,000. 2012, actually, here's what happened. Here was her progression. Her first year was 7,000, 16,000. When I started coaching her, she made 24,000. In 2012, she made 64,000. In 2013, she made 900,000. How does that happen? How do you explain that? Can you explain it? I can, because I coach her. I can tell you a little bit about her. She's the most, one of the most disciplined women I've ever coached. When I started coaching her, she owned two properties outright. She had $65,000 in the bank and had two properties that were worth about $800,000 that she owned out 
right. And she owned those properties outright on a teacher's salary and waitressing and flipping houses. What does that tell you? Just, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Now, if you interviewed her, you would see how disciplined she is. And she does the same thing over and over with very little fanfare. What does that mean? She's result-oriented. Right, so her identity isn't based on recognition. She doesn't really care if she gets recognized. She's not seeking glory. Remember that song by Survivor? Don't ever trade passion for glory. It's not about validation. Right, exactly. She, that, this, was, this was the most important aspect of her. She did not seek.